What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Sam Carpenter. Talk about her, specifically Melissa Barrera's character in Scream 2022, and talk about if she did a good job as the final girl. Talk about if I would be comfortable and okay with having her as the final girl going forward. Now, this obviously is a divisive topic, and I don't think it actually could be more divisive, right? You have people on Twitter, actually mainly on Twitter, right, where you can only say good things about uh, about her or about her character. Otherwise, you are labeled as toxic. I've never been one. You know, I've always kind of been the one to go against the grain there. Um, I, I think you can. I think you can have criticisms of the movie, of the character, her, you know, this character, any character, and not be labeled. <laughs> You're not, you know, you don't come across as toxic. Toxic. And that's I want to make that very, very clear. You know, I have nothing against Melissa Barrera as a person. I don't know her. I, I probably never will know her, right? So I really have nothing uh, negative to say there. And, and anything I say is just my personal opinion on her performance and the character. All right. So now that we got all that stuff out of the way. I'm going to stick with what I've said over the past couple uh, days or the past weeks since I've seen the movie, but I want to kind of expand on it. I, I think she was a middling character uh you know i ranked all the characters in the movie i think i put her at six or seven so i kind of put her right in the middle because there's 13 and all and uh i thought she did better with time i thought over time she got better but i, I don't know i'm kind of conflicted on because some people I, I know i saw some people on twitter say you know she's supposed to be like closed off and almost kind of like one dimensional in the beginning and then as she opens up that's why she gets better. i don't know if I agree with that. In fact, I would say I don't. I think there's just things she's good at and things she's not as good at. This is going to contain spoilers, by the way, in case any of that wasn't already clear. When she was in the hospital talking to Tara about, you know, their dad about, and then a bunch about her dad, about Billy, I thought that was easily the weakest she could have been. Um, I was not impressed whatsoever, and I think it became very clear, at least to me, and I think other people as well, it's actually where Tara stole it. So to me, when I talk about the future of Scream and stuff, it, it's, I don't, I'm not like offering her up as like some sort of like sacrificial lamb, but I would feel a lot better. Or I just feel like Tara is the better character. I just do. I flat out feel Tara is the more, uh, weirdly enough, developed character, or at least feels like it. Definitely the, the better acted, the better ranged character of the two sisters. Um, Now, I, I think they're in a good spot. I think they, I don't think they did it on purpose, honestly, in a way. I think they kind of got lucky that at least one of these characters really had. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Granted, with all of this stuff, this was something I was worried about going into the movie, but it's not because of Melissa Brera, the person. It really was stacked up against, in my opinion, anybody that was going to play this character. You, you are taking over the main lead of the movie. Even Scream 4, I would say is a lot more even. I mean, Jill is in the movie a good amount, but she's not in it glaringly. Like, she's not literally the center of attention. If anything, it's actually a little bit more spread out. Sydney is in it a lot more. You know what I mean? So there's a lot more spotlight on her. So the movie kind of helped Jill. Do you know what I mean? Whereas this movie really put a lot on Sam, on Tara, and on Richie. Those were the really the main three throughout the entire movie. Obviously, other characters stepped in here and there, but those were the primary three. And so there's a lot of weight on their shoulders of, of, of carrying the movie or, or being asked to carry the movie. I don't think Sam did the greatest job with that, but you could also argue, you know, did she need to do it? That is a tough thing, though, because I think in order to push her character as somebody we are supposed to really, really like and uh, and root for, granted, I did root for her. You know, I was not like, oh, I want her to... This is not a character where it's like she's so horrible. Again, I don't think she's a bad, horrible character. I don't think it was a horrible acting performance. I think it was definitely spotty. You know what I mean? I, but I was never rooting for her to die, you know? But I do think in the future... I would feel happier with Tara being the person and Sam not being. That's just, you know, that's my personal opinion. If you want to label it as toxic, that would be a wrong use of the word. But, I mean, you could do whatever you want to do. Um, but, you know, I mean, so that's a lot of more negative. You know what I mean? The hospital was a little bit weak. Um, you know, her, I don't know, just the delivery was not very solid. Her crying in that scene also was not very solid. But, like I said, as the movie went on, I do think she got better in different the different roles she was in, but I really think she shined, which this is important. This is important. I think she shined easily the most at the very end when, I, I guess, you know, the third act. Well, you know, I, I would, I guess, consider it the third act. Literally when Amber says, like, welcome to the third act. I think that 
is a good you know time period to set from where Sam really got better. Um, I think her with Richie in the basement was actually really, really good. I think her cutting Tara's bonds or, you know, about to, and then she kind of questions it. I thought that was excellent. And then from the point where she picks up the gun on, that was all really good. I think, honestly, she did a really good job. And she also showed that she can literally be a psychopath, which is important in, in these films and important for her character. Um, no, I mean, all kidding aside, she she definitely did a lot better in those scenes. And, and honestly, again, I, th I feel like, if anything, that kind of, like, leans me towards wanting to use her as a potential like going down a dark path or even maybe being killed in some sort of like twisted like you know this is to kind of subvert expectations so we're going to kill her off halfway through the next movie I, I feel like that's okay and I also as I've said before uh, two other things number one the range that Jenna Ortega can do as Tara I think is just way more okay I just think that's that's general acting ability which is fine it's okay to say that but number two I also I guess what I've said before leading into this movie is their ages right Melissa Barrera is 31 and Jenna Ortega is 19 now it, I'm, I'm not trying to make everything about age but you know coincidentally or like funny enough to think about it I wonder if maybe that was done on purpose, not when they got these actresses, but just in general, the idea of, well, are we going to give this franchise to somebody that is older, that is, you know, 31 years old, and, and I, mean, I guess she was 30 when she filmed it, right? But, like, she's a little bit older. In fact, she's, I believe she was the oldest of the entire group, older than uh, Jack Quaid, older than, you know, Dylan Minnette, all of them in the entire friend group. She was the oldest one. And then you have Tara, who was part of that group, and purposely younger, and in fact, Jenna Ortega is the youngest of the group at 19. I, I, I believe she was 18 when uh, she filmed it. She had just turned it. So the, I, I feel like that was almost, maybe it was a happy coincidence, maybe it was on purpose, that just based off of ages and who you'd maybe want to lead it going forward, who's more of like the innocent there, right? It's it's Tara. Tara is the more younger, you know what I mean? Like all this stuff happening probably impacts her more. That's her. So you know, it, it, it's not necessarily a competition, but it is just interesting how they've done it, where for the next movie, I, I would not be shocked at all if it's not Sam that leads it throughout the entire thing, if maybe they do some sort of switcheroo, you know, halfway through or something, and, and they end up making it uh, Tara. So you know, I just kind of wanted to go through that. I don't think Sam is a bad character, but I will honestly say I think she's a, a middling character. She's not, you know, the strongest, you know, lead or final girl. And uh, yet again, granted, because I don't want people to get too upset, granted, like, they put that on her. Again, like, Emma Roberts didn't really have to do that stuff. And maybe, maybe, again, to give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe Jenna Ortega actually benefited because of the situation she was placed in. I mean, she was in it. I, I, I think she was in it way more than I thought she was going to be. I thought she would be in the hospital, but really just be kind of invisible for the majority of the movie. I mean, she was in it. And and she displayed a lot of different, I guess a lot of range, a, a big amount of range uh, in that opening phone call was super good. The hospital, her reacting to Sam. Again, I, I really feel like that was kind of the, the dagger in the, okay, I'm going to give Sam a chance. Oh, but Tara's really good in the opening. Okay, but Sam's the final girl. We know that. We know she's the main character. Okay, but in this, like, emotional sisterly conversation, Tara's stealing the scene. I mean, there's, n I mean, not, a, if you had to award a winner to the two of them, like, it's Tara, you know what I mean, uh, of that scene. And then from that point on, it's like, okay, well, I'm kind of rooting for her now. I, I feel like she's the better character. I think she's the better actress. So, and then as the movie went on, I think it kind of just showed that. Again, though, Melissa Barrera did a really good job, I would say, at the very end, and she got better as the movie went on, and I think she just does better in certain circumstances. I, again, I don't really think that's a negative thing to say. So, you know, will I mind Sam being in the next one? Absolutely not. This is not like, oh, if she's the main character of, of the sixth movie, I'm done. No. I mean, I, I'm all in. I'm definitely in to, to see more of her. I think there's a lot of potential. Like, I actually, that was one of the main things I said about her character, because I think there's loads of potential with the Billy stuff. Um, you know, even with the father, Tara's real father, and, and Sam's, like, a stepfather, right? Like, leaving, there's potential there. But Sam has so much she could do or could go through with her kind of mental problems and with Billy and, and all that. Like, I really like that. So they really set themselves up well where she's she was decent enough, and I think she's got a lot of room to grow, or she doesn't have to. If they don't want to go there, you know, if they want to do something kind of crazy, they can, and they have a really good fallback. You know what I mean? Like, they have that fallback plan or the fallback option with Tara that whether they planned it or not, they have it. 
So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure, as always, you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you guys know when all these videos go up. I got plenty more Scream content coming or on the way. Lots of different uh, topics I've tried to think of over the past couple days. And I hope to see you guys there.